Let us talk handholds for social partner dancing. Uh, let us take a closer look at the basic handholds for the start position of open position. And I dance Cuban salsa, but the handholds we use in Cuban salsa are more or less the same in other uh, salsa styles and in a dance like bachata, etc. We have four common handholds. The wall, climb the wall. The pistol, the Spider-Man, and the classic Cuban uh, handholds. What are the arguments pro and con for and against the use of these four handholds? Handhold number one, climb the wall. I love this descriptive name. I'm the leader, this is a wall. I present my hand as a wall. The follower comes along and climb it. Uh, some people uh, use another name for climb the wall. They call it the cup because it looks like a cup. What are the arguments for this handhold? Argument number one. Climb the wall is a mutual handhold. The leader has the overall responsibility, but the follower must participate with half of the tension she is equally responsible for the success of the handhold. Look here, I'm the leader. The follower comes along. When I push, I push inside here, the follower's hands. And she has tension in the hand and in the arm, so the, her body moves back. But when I pull, she's not coming with me unless she has tension in her hand and participate. The same is true when I go up, the follow hands goes up, but when I go down, it only works if the follower participate and is equally really, uh, responsible for the, the success. This is a very important uh, notion, mutual handhold, making the follower true partner in the dance. Two, climb the wall is respectful. The lead presents his hand. He invites the follower to come along and dance. The follower accepts, but she is free to disconnect and walk away at any time during the dance. Argument number three. Climb the wall is soft on the follower's fingers, on her hands, on her breasts, on her forearm. There's no grabbing. There's no locking. There's no squeezing. There's no use of the thumb. Climb the wall is as gentle as a handhold can ever be. Argument number four. Climb the wall is the only handhold that is the same for open and closed position. Except that in open position, the wall looks like this. In closed position, the lead's hand is like this, but the follower climbs it. 
it is uh, rather nice that it's basically the same handhold. Argument number five. Climb the wall is the handhold that is the easiest to transform into all the other handholds we need for turn action. Or getting into close position, we just need to do this. If we need turn action, we just do this. Then we have magnetic touch, slightly bent fingers, hooked fingers. Uh, we have this type for, for, for certain turns. We are only talking about the margins, but it is the easiest handhold to transform back and forth into all the other handholds we need during the dance. Argument number six for climb the wall. And it's the same argument for all the mutual handholds. It is good at transforming itself to all the other handholds also because of one specific reason. The follower contributes already to the basic handhold. She is hot, has a hot hand. She is ready for action because she is already participating. And it makes it very easy to go back and forth. Argument number seven of climb the wall. Of all the mutual handholds, it has by far the biggest surface for the follower to find even in pitch black darkness and to hook onto. This is a very, potentially it's a very dynamic handhold. If you take the index finger forward for pistol, the pistol handhold, it is much more burp burp. If also takes the index, like the pinky finger, the little finger forward, it's even less. By far the biggest surface of all the mutual handholds. Finally, the eighth argument for climb the wall. It has a built-in plan B. If it is a very weak follower, in certain situations, the lead can use his index finger and grab her hand just a little. In some rare situations. Or the lead can even use his thumb. Only as an exception to the rule, but the lead, at least, he has the option in certain situations of using his thumb a little if it is a weak follower. Handhold number two. We have climbed the wall and then if the index finger points forward, we have the pistol. And the leader can of course have two pistols. The pistols are of course also called the guns. It is a mutual handhold and similar to climb the wall, but, but we can see that the wall has been reduced to just three fingers and it is not that solid anymore. Before the wall had this width by having the index finger pointing forward, it is reduced to half its former size. Um, and also, I don't like the look of dancing with guns in your hands. And it is a hazard on the, the dance floor. The index finger can get into the eye of somebody, into the hair as you turn into clothing easily. And when you dance and go back into it, oops, the follower easily bumps into that index finger. Uh, I don't know of any argument for using the pistol. Handhold number three. The Spider-Man. We have climbed the wall. 
the index finger forward pistol and if the pinky the little finger is also the baby finger pointing forward we have the spider-man Here the wall has been reduced to just two fingers. Wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. And we have not only one finger pointing forward, but two fingers getting in the way. And when the follower connects again, up. If the pistol is bad, this handhold is, of course, even worse. And as I used to say, if you want to be remembered for the weirdness of your handhold, go use the Spider-Man. I have never ever heard any arguments for using it. It has nothing going for it. That takes us to handhold number four. The classic Cuban macho handhold over the rest of the follower, the thumb inside here, and you fingers over the rest. It is a family of handholds because the lead can of course also hold here or hold here or hold the forearm. In close position we even see leaders holding like this. So that is the common feature of all the handholds. It's handholds of grabbing, of locking, of squeezing, of using the thumb. It's a one-sided handhold. Only the leader contributes tension in the handhold. Only the leader is responsible for the success of the handhold. Now, the follower must of course have tension in the arm. So when the leader pushes, not the arm, goes back, but the body of the follower, and when the lead pulls, there's tension in the arm, so the, the follower follows with the arm. But in the hand itself, the follow is just dead meat. She's not part of the game. Now, the classic Cuban handholds of domination are of course the signature handholds of the Cuban macho dancer and the basis for macho dancing so common in Cuban social dances like Sun and Casino. One could say that too often the Cuban lead doubles down He's not only responsible for making the social choreography, he makes it all about himself. Reducing the follower to just being an assistant to him in the dance. It's sadly to say, but this is very common in Cuban salsa. Now, let us take a closer look at the Cuban macho handholds to see if uh, there's anything good to say about them. But I will, I will start with what I don't like about the Cuban Metro handles. Now, uh, some leads uh, manage to use these handholds in a gentle manner. But the Metro handholds have a tendency, not always, not all leads, but they have a tendency to be too hard on the follower's hand and wrist. This is a serious problem. I have heard many followers complaining about it. And the Cuban macho handholds are the only handholds having this problem of being too hard on some followers' hands and wrists. The second argument 
against uh, the Cuban macho handles. Even if the leader managed to use them in a rather soft way, there is a psychological problem. Many followers complain about being grabbed, being pulled, being pushed, being manhandled. They don't participate voluntarily. They cannot disconnect without using jiu-jitsu or something. They are completely at the mercy of the lead. And uh, even if done in a gentle way, there is a psychological problem that this handhold is really the basic basis for macho dancing. And many followers don't like that look and feel, don't like that feeling, so to speak. They want to be true partners, friends, dancing. Argument number three against the Cuban macho handhold. It sets a bad example. All leaders experience that suddenly, with some followers, suddenly the followers grab back. They use the thumb in some handholds. They start squeezing your hand. It's terrible. It destroys the dance. But how can a leader tell the follower not to squeeze, not to use her thumbs, when that's exactly what the leader himself is doing all the time? Argument number four against the, using the Cuban macho handholds. Because this basic handhold squeezes using the thumb, locks the hand, and the follower is not participating, this handhold is of course less good at transforming itself into all the other handholds we need. For more dynamic dancing and turn action, because suddenly the follower must participate with tension and is equally responsible for the success of the handhold. But then she is back and just being grabbed and pulled and pushed. And then suddenly she has to participate back and forth, at being just a manhandled doll, and next a participating a true partner. This back and forth is of course not that easy. That takes us to argument number five for why we should never use the Cuban macho handles. Even if you manages to use the Cuban macho handles in an okay way, nice and gentle, the followers are not complaining. Even if you have the best intentions of not being a macho dancer, but of being a follow-centric Dancer, the use of the Cuban macho handholds have a strong tendency, whether you like it or not, to create, if not a macho dance, then a lead heavy dance, the look and feel of a lead heavy dance. And that is bad enough. Cuban salsa has a terrible reputation of being the most lead heavy of all social dances. Very often with too little in it for the follower. The dance is mostly about the lead. I think we should change that and bring the Cuban social dances back to where they belong as follow-centric dance styles. 
Let me end this uh, rant about handholds with a personal note. When I started dancing Cuban salsa in uh, Copenhagen, I was very fortunate because two of the more prominent dance instructors, actually both from Cuba, they used climb the wall. One of them even promoted climb the wall with a lot of arguments. The other was more, he used this mostly, but sometimes he also used the Cubans, just uh, in order not to forget them. But I was very much in doubt myself, which handhold should I use? Because most of the other instructors in Copenhagen, they still used Cuban macho. So what about me? I switched back and forth. But then one day I was dancing with a rather fantastic follower. She had just won a Marilyn Monroe look-alike competition. And I used the Cuban macho handles. Then suddenly in the middle of the dance, she stopped me from, prevented me from continuing. And she said to me, Please don't grab my hands, don't use these handholds, don't squeeze, don't use your thumb. They are too hard on my fingers, they are too hard on my wrists. At that moment, I decided only to use Climb the Wall. Thank you for listening and watching this video. See you on the dance floor.